Joining me now is Chesapeake Bay waterman Luke McFadden. Luke, thanks for coming on the show. You surveyed the bridge yesterday. What did you see? Uh, yeah, I mean, I went out right after it happened. It's right behind my house. Hmm. I mean, 10 minute boat ride. And I mean, it's it's just in ruins. It's pretty surreal to see it like that. Um, it looks like something out of a movie. It's I mean, it's sad. It's but truly sad. Can you uh, give any estimation after the damage that you saw any estimation whatsoever on how long it'll take to re re redo the rebuild the bridge? I mean, I'm not a bridge expert. I'm a crab fisherman, but I, I mean, I think it took him like five years to build build this one, you know, in the 70s, I guess. And uh, I mean, they didn't have to pick up a mile and a half of bridge up out of a 60 foot deep channel. How much uh, of the bridge which, is actually down? I mean, the, the bridge is what 1.6 miles, I think it is. How much of it is actually down? I mean, the whole center span. So, I mean, the majority of it. And you can see in that picture there, I mean, that yeah. channel right where that boat's at is like 60 foot deep. They maintain that channel by 60 foot. And that, you know, that bridge is right on the bottom. And yeah. It's still sticking up that much. It's so a, there's it, quite a bit of steel and concrete to, to be moved. It's a big job. It occurs to me, though, that any bridge anywhere is vulnerable to cargo ships, container ships of this size. One tiny little bump from a ship as big as that into one of the stanchions to keep it upright, and that bridge is gone. This is vulnerability all over the world, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, nothing is impervious to that. It's a 950-foot ship, and I think a lot of people that are seeing this on the news don't realize how big these ships really are. I mean, I've worked around them my whole life. I've been on the water in Chesapeake Bay my whole life. I mean, their daily part of my life is seeing these things and being up close to them. I mean, they are massive. And you are not stopping that thing. No anchor is going to stop it. No, I mean, that, that ship takes a half mile to stop. <laughs> you pull it out of gear. So uh, nothing is impervious to that ship hitting the bridge. I don't, there's no bridge anywhere that can stand right. up to that. <laughs> you, now, you live very close to the bridge. You say you're about a 10 minute boat ride away. The collapse mm -hmm. of this bridge has that. What kind of a difference has that made to your immediate environment? I mean, it's messed up traffic pretty bad. Uh, I think people are just now trying to figure out how to kind of get to work around it and, and whatever else. And I know that traffic's been been very bad for people, you know, from my area, which is kind of a suburb of, of uh, Baltimore City, trying to get over into Baltimore or vice versa for work. Because now really all we have is the tunnel um, or you go all the way around or through, through the city. And I mean, traffic around the tunnel was already pretty bad. And yeah. this is not helping. Uh, I mean, people don't realize how much we use this bridge. You, you know, I mean, it, it, I was on that bridge hours before it fell. Yeah. And I woke up at 6 in the morning to go get back on the bridge to go pick up my boat <laughs> the day it fell. And, you know, it was gone. So, I well, mean, I, I use that bridge five, six times a week. And there's people that use it twice as much as me. I'll bet. Um, Luke McFadden, look, yeah. we're out of time, I'm afraid. But thanks for painting a very interesting picture of what happened and what it's like there now. Luke McFadden, everyone, thanks for being on the show. We appreciate it. See you soon. No problem. Thanks you for having me.